In our recent live stream, we had an opportunity to catch up with Tiberius, and along with answering your questions, we solved a couple of server-side template injection labs. So today, we're following up on the same topic to review what we learned, and as usual, we'll have a short primer followed by some labs. If you haven't already, definitely check out Tiberius's live stream over on Twitch, or give him a follow on Twitter. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have an AppSec topic that you'd like us to cover in the future, let us know in the comments below. And with that, let's dive in. Before we can understand template injection, we need to understand how template engines and templates are used. A template engine allows us to separate the presentation layer from the logic layer in our applications. We can insert variables and sometimes even complex logic directly into our templates, which then get rendered into the final page. Some popular templating engines are Jinja2, Twig, ERB, FreeMaker, Handlebars, and Mustache. So here we have an app using Twig. And what I've done is use two different methods to output the data to the screen. So if we just send a message saying hello, you can see that we get two outputs. So in the first block of code, I've used Twig as intended. And I found this from the documentation. And it loads in a predefined template. And the second one creates a template from the user input and then renders it. So server-side template injection only really occurs when you use templating engines in a way that's not intended, like in this example. So let's go back and add a malicious payload. So I'm just going to do two curly braces, and you can see that I've been playing a little bit with this lab already, three times three, and click generate text. And as you can see, the first one just reflects the inputs back to us, and the second one actually is executed. So three times three is nine. And to verify that this is server-side template injection and not client-side template injection, we can just press Control U, have a look at the source code, and check that our payload has been executed here as well. So as you can see, we have nine instead of brace brace, three times three brace brace. So this highlights that we really need to understand the technology we're using and try not to force it to carry out tasks that it was not designed for. We need to use the right tool for the right job. And one more thing to consider is that not all template engines offer the same functionality or the ability to achieve things like code execution. So this can vary from target to target. So once you've identified the templating engine being used, you need to do a little bit of research and digging to really understand what it's vulnerable to, how to attack it, and what's actually available. Let's take a look at a lab and see how we might discover and exploit this vulnerability. So here we have the application that we're going to try and inject our server-side template injection payload into. And what we need to do is first have a look at the application. And as soon as we click on the first product, we get this. Unfortunately, this product is out of stock. And probably what we want to do when we're approaching this application is just have a look through, check all of the functionality, see what's available to us, and then come back to Burp Suite and inspect it a little bit more closely. So if I come over to proxy and HTTP history, and I'm just going to switch on so that we can see all the filters so that we can see everything. And as we scroll down, we can have a look for something that's potentially vulnerable. So this message equals looks like it could be a good place to fuzz. So I'm just going to press control I and send this over to intruder. And then we're going to clear this, highlight the area that we want to fuzz and click add, come to payloads. And we have a couple of options here. So if you're running Burp Suite Pro, you can use the basic fuzzing template injection payload here, or we can come over to something like payloads or the things or hack tricks and find one. So I'm just going to come to Google quickly. Google for hack tricks SSTI. Scroll down a bit and here's a nice short list to get us started. Just hit paste and then start attack. And you can see that we get a varying length of results. So if we come in and take a look at these, we can come up and have a look at the response. And what we want to do is search for 49. So this one has two matches, which is not what we're looking for. 
also two matches. This one has three matches, and this is likely our payload. So let's go ahead and verify this. I'm just going to press Control R to send this to the repeater. And a nice little trick that I learned from Tiberius when he was on stream is that you can add something to the start of your payload, so a unique word, and he was using aardvark because that rarely comes up. I'm just going to use the word cheese. And then what we're going to do is send this request. And then here you can search for cheese and we see our payload. But also if you hit the little cog, you can auto scroll to match when text changes. Then instead of clicking next or before or scrolling down, it's going to automatically bring us to this place, which is quite nice. So here we've verified our server side templating injection because our payload is being evaluated. If I just decode this, you can see this is our payload. So I think the objective of this lab is to delete the morale.txt file. So let's see if we can get code execution. So if we scroll down a little bit, so if we grab this and try and search for it, we have 22 matches. So I'm just going to quickly look for one that gives us code execution. And it looks like this here in the same format, ERB Ruby can do this. So if I just copy this, paste it here, control U to URL and code, hit send, and we get Carlos. So indeed, we have code execution. And if I recall, all we need to do is rm morale.txt. Make sure this is properly encoded, hit send. And then when we come back to our lab, we get congratulations, you solved the lab. So that's a very quick introduction to server side template injection and a nice little lab that shows us what we can fuzz for. And then once we potentially find something where we can go from there. Before we wrap up today's video, I just wanted to highlight the resources that we used today. So these are things that you should definitely bookmark and make use of. And first up, we have hack tricks a great resource for getting up to speed on particular attacks or technologies quickly. And not just for AppSec, it also has a ton of stuff for network penetration testing. And then there is also a cloud version as well. We also have the ever famous Portswigger Web Security Academy. And recently we now have access to learning paths. So if you tend to jump around and study lots of different things at once and find it hard to focus, this should help you commit to a single topic and get the labs done. And finally, of course, we have the Swiss key repo with payloads, all the things. When I'm looking for alternative payloads or troubleshooting a target, I often use this resource. If you have a favorite resource that you think is worth sharing, then of course, let us know in the comments below. So that's it for this video. Server side template injection, whilst not super common, is definitely something that we should be on the lookout for and once found can often be easily exploited. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.